So what's it like towing with a first generation Tundra? Well, stick around and find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Holland Vols Adventures. Um, today we're gonna talk towing with the Tundra. <clears throat> I'm uh, on my way down to Harrison Bay State Park Campground for some camping with the family this weekend. So I am pulling our 2019 Forest River Wildwood FSX 179DB, um, which is a bunkhouse style trailer. It's uh, overall length's 22 and a half feet. The box is about 18 feet. Um, typical setup, uh, queen in the front, dinette that turns into a bed and then it's got two oversized bunks in the back so good size trailer I'll put the the details and specifications down in the comments uh, or in the, the description um, but roughly I think dry weights around 3200 pounds but but loaded so you know with all of our gear and it going on a camping trip it's it's over 4,000 um, and, and probably then some so when you're you know, I guess the first tip when you're when you're looking at something to tow is not what the base curb weight is. What's the weight of this thing going to be when it's actually being pulled down the road? So luggage, gear, food, utensils, chairs, like all the stuff that you're going to bring with you and load into that trailer. What's it really going to weigh? I think you'll be surprised to find it adds up really quickly, especially when you have a family of five. Um, so, but uh, before we get there, so, you know, towing, you know, a lot of people say, you know, what's it like towing with a first generation Tundra or can I tow X with a Tundra or, you know, hey, I've got a such and such. Do you think the Tundra will pull it? And then lastly, my favorite question is what can I do to increase the towing capacity of my Tundra? So we'll get to all that. So since I've owned this truck, I've towed a few different things. I've got a 15 and a half foot flat skiff um, that I tow all over the place. It's it's my fishing boat. So I use it on the lakes and rivers and streams and everything around where I live. I tow it down to Florida to fish on the flats, uh, the place that our family has down in Pretty Doe Key. Um, you know, I'm, I'm towing it at least once or twice a week, give or take. Uh, the other thing I've towed with it is I, we used to have a pop-up camper. So it was a uh, it was a 10-foot box. It was about 13 feet overall length. It was a good size pop-up. You know, had a king on one side, queen on the other, a dinette and a, a bench and a dinette, both that converted to twin beds. So it was, it was pretty good size, but it was around 2,000 pounds loaded, um, you know, give or take. And then uh, years ago when my father still owned this truck, I actually towed a couple of my boats when my truck was in the shop. So at one point I towed a 25 foot Baja Outlaw, uh, which that boat on the trailer, call it about 5,000 pounds. I'm working off memory here. I may have to correct that in the comments. Um, and then I also towed a Sensation 288 uh, and that boat on the trailer was closer to 6,000 pounds. Um, so the question, will my Tundra tow X? As far as my little skiff, tows it like it's not there like legitimately you don't know the boat's back there um, the only time that I know it's back there is when I go over a bump and I hear it make noise um, otherwise the truck drives and handles pretty much as it normally does um, but that boat motor and trailer everything on it is less than a thousand pounds it's a very light craft it's made to fish skinny you know, getting shallow water, it's not a very heavy thing. Um, so it's just not much weight. So obviously if, if this truck felt a thousand pounds, that's a problem. Um, the pop-up had no trailer brakes. Um, it uh, was in very good shape. I kept it well serviced. It towed, this truck towed that very well, even without trailer brakes. So figure 2000 pounds, you're gonna feel it back there. You're gonna feel it going up grades. You're gonna feel it when trucks and stuff pass and blow wind on it. Um, you're gonna feel it stopping. Um, but this truck handled it without really any stress. You know, it, I never felt like the truck was 
was working hard, you know, the brakes always felt adequate. Um, if I had my druthers, if I could go back in time, I would probably have had a pop-up with trailer brakes. Personally, I feel more comfortable when you're towing over 2,000, you know, 2,000 pounds and up. I just, I like having that security of a trailer brake system. Um, but again, it wasn't a be all end all. In fact, I, I pulled that pop up with my old Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. So if that tells you anything, it's, it's well, well within the realms of what this can tow. So let's talk about the Wildwood. So this is a obviously high profile, bigger camper, heavier camper, I'm talking 4,000 pounds um, loaded. It does have trailer brakes. Um, but here's the deal. If you're going to tow one of these with a Tundra, now mine's a double cab, it's a 2004. Um, so that means it's got the four speed automatic. The horsepower is a little bit lower than the 05 and 06, as well as the torque. Um, but aside from that, pretty much similar to what you're going to look at for any, you know, let's say 2003 and up Tundra, um, you will want sway control. You will want weight distribution you will want a brake box and trailer brakes. Um, and actually I would go probably a step further and I would say you will need all of those things. Um, so like a day like today, I'm, I've been, I'm actually on the back roads now, but I've been towing on the highway doing 70 miles an hour and it is a very windy day. This thing has been all over the road. Every time I get into an open spot and that crosswind hits, you feel it. Um, but besides that, on a normal day towing this trailer, you are going to feel the grades. The truck is going to work harder going up hills. Um, you're definitely going to want the trailer uh, brakes. Um, so on this truck, I keep a, I have a Reese uh, trailer brake box, trailer controller, or brake controller. Um, I went ahead and bought the pigtail that wires into the factory wiring. It's a great setup. Works great. I don't have to put a ton of gain in it. It works pretty good. Um, but you are going to feel a trailer this size because you're basically towing a brick. Um, I don't care how much they try to slant the front of these trailers, they're not aerodynamic. It's like towing a big kite down the road. So everything's gonna work against you. Wind, terrain, hills, um, temperature, trucks passing you. Like you are going to feel all that with this truck. Because let's be honest, the Tundra is not a, the, the, the first generation Tundra is not a full size truck. It's a heavy, it's a, it's a, a chubby midsize, if you will. Um, when this truck came out, it didn't necessarily go head to head with the big three. It was a great niche vehicle between those coming out of a compact truck, such as a Ranger, a Tacoma, an S10, something like that, that wanted a bigger truck, but didn't necessarily want a full size truck. Um, some advantages that the Tundra had back then was good power to weight ratio, excellent handling, really good ride. Um, of course, obviously reliability has been a huge factor in the success of these trucks. Um, but a lot of those things also work against it a little bit as far as a tow platform. These things have a very compliant suspension. So if you're towing something with a lot of ton weight, the rear end will sag. You've got to do weight distribution hitch on these. And I would actually, something that's on the radar for me is I'm, I'm probably gonna do the, the Kong overload bump stops um, or Timken or one of those different brands that, that has the replaceable bump stop that gives you more bump stop to give you a little bit more of a cushion if you do bottom your suspension out. Uh, because the suspension on these is very compliant. It's not a, a stiff ride. These trucks ride really nice. But the downside of that is when you put weight over that rear axle, it's going to squat. So you've got to offset that. Um, the other thing is as far as power. So on today's level, these trucks are not very powerful. In fact, I would call them underpowered today. You know, when you're looking at other trucks in the big three that have upwards of upper 300s, low 400 horsepower and, and, and much higher torque numbers, this truck at 200, I think it's 245 horsepower is, is a runt. Um, I mean, Tacomas and things like that have that much power out of a V6. So it's always been the, the, the joke with the first gen Tundra is you get the economy of a V8 and the power of a V6. Uh, in, in some ways that's true, um, with the exception of they do make good torque. And so when you are climbing those grades and you are getting a load moving, you've got enough torque to do it. Um, I say all that to basically say this truck is not gonna win any races when you're towing, um, but it will get you there. Um, and it will do so relatively comfortably, although if you're in an area that has really rough roads, 
you're going to feel like you're on a buckboard a little bit going up and down because again it's a it's a really soft it's a soft suspension on these trucks um now as far as boat trailers um if you've got a smaller boat let's say something in the 16 to 18 foot range and a lot of those trailers either didn't have brakes or they have surge brakes um you're going to be fine with those i think the smaller boats you're you're under that 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 weight category that you don't necessarily have to have a braking system although it would help um, and if you do have a trailer or boat that size and it's got the surge brakes while they're not perfect they do offer some additional secondary braking which is nice um, if you're getting into a boat like the two i had we're getting into 25 close to 30 feet um, you've really got to make sure it's got a very good braking system um, keep in mind that you don't you can't run weight distribution with boat trailers especially those with um, surge brakes um, so you're in my opinion my second boat well at least the second boat I mentioned I've had a lot of boats the the, the sensation that was touching 6,000 pounds that's the top of the tow rating on this truck and man you could feel it um, you could feel every bit of it um, the smaller boat the 25 foot outlaw uh, the Baja it was what I would call the kind of average. I think most trailer type boats you're gonna see at the ramp are gonna be three to 4,000 pounds loaded. Um, and that was okay with this truck, but again, you're gonna feel it. You know the weight's back there. Pulling the grades, it's gonna slow you down. Um, you don't have the weight distribution, so the back's gonna squat a little bit, especially if that boat's not fitted to the trailer right. And what I mean by that, if there's not good balance, so if it rides nose heavy and you've got a lot of tongue weight, or if it rides tail, he tail heavy and it's trying to pull your trailer up, um, sometimes you'll feel light in the rear end. Um, you really have to make sure the trailer's set up right and matches the boat and the weight set up accordingly. Um, so that brings me to my last topic and something that a lot of people mention, a lot of people ask questions about is, how do I increase the, the, the trailer, the towing capacity of my truck? And the answer is you can't. I don't care what you do to a truck. You cannot increase the factory tow rating. That is a stamped in stone number that does not change no matter what you do to it. Airbags, well, I don't care what it is you do, you will not increase the towing capacity, the rating of that vehicle. All you can do with add-ons and accessories is increase the handling and the ability to tow safely. And so what that means is, I don't care what you do to, a tr to this truck, I cannot safely tow more than 6,000 um, pounds. Because even those devices don't really, all they are at best is a band-aid. You know, you're, you're covering up a deficiency in the vehicle you're using to tow with. Whether it's, you know, if you're overloading it, you're, you're having an increased stopping distance, you have adverse handling characteristics, like I said, just this truck today in this wind, and I'm well within my tow capacity, this thing's all over the road because it's in less than ideal conditions. You know, if I was on a completely flat road with no wind, no traffic, nobody to get in my way, and I wanted to hook to 10,000 pounds, sure, I could do it. Uh, I don't know how long the truck will last trying to pull that around all the time, but yeah, you can do it. That doesn't mean you should do it. And it's the same way with adding devices and accessories to a vehicle such as airbags overload springs all those types of things that people think oh i've got this i can tow more no you can't you're still at a six thousand pound tow limit with this truck you're just allowing yourself to tow that weight more effectively more comfortably more you know even more safely and you're giving yourself better handling characteristics when you get into situations that are outside the average you know, like, so today it would be really nice almost if I had double sway control. I've just got one side. I know a lot of guys that run it on both sides and it would be helpful today. Doesn't mean that increases my tow rating. It just helps me tow the trailer more comfortably. So think about all these things when you're buying, especially if you're in the market for a Tundra. If you're looking at a big trailer, something that's really tall, really long, really heavy, this isn't the truck for you. You need to get into something that's a three quarter ton, full size truck or even a one ton truck, depending on what it is you're towing. Um, but if you're looking at the run of the mill, smaller recreational RV camper, smaller boats, you know, smaller trailers, this is a great truck. I wouldn't hesitate to drive this truck across the country with my little boat. Probably wouldn't do it with my big camper. Um, I try to keep us in about a two to three hour radius. 
just because I don't want to overwork this truck. It's my daily driver. I've got to depend on it. I don't want to work this thing too heavily because I need to be able to get it in any time and it's going to have no problems. Um, and I've lived out west. I've driven out west a lot. And I know for me personally, towing this trailer west down I-70 up that continuous grade with crosswind is probably not going to be the most enjoyable trip. I used to tow horse trailers back and forth through that area, and if I'm towing that kind of distance, I'm gonna be in a three-quarter or one-ton truck. I want comfort, I want stability, I wanna be able to not have to be stressed as I'm driving. I don't wanna get there and have my, my fingers hurt because I'm white knuckle the whole way. So this just wouldn't be the vehicle that i choose for a cross-country trip, um, personal preference. So. I know I've seen and read a lot of guys that be like, I towed such and such 3,000 miles and no problems. Well, you probably didn't have a problem, but I guarantee you that it wasn't the most comfortable, most enjoyable trip you've ever taken either. Um, because each vehicle kind of has its purpose. And again, this is still a mid-sized truck. It's not a full-size vehicle. Um, and trust me, when you tow heavy, you're, you're, you're going to know it. You're, that's, that fact is going to be very evident. Um, so let's talk about what I've done to this truck to this point. So I've got, uh, in other words, things that I've done to make this truck more enjoyable to tow with and more effective. So the first thing that I did obviously was weight distribution hitch and sway control. Um, it's an old chain style, but you know what? It works. It does the trick. At some point, I would like to up, up, you know, update that, that to one of the newer torsion designs where you don't have the chains. Uh, but you know what? That's that you know that's six seven hundred bucks. I don't need to spend right now when what I've got does the trick. Um, the next thing I did, obviously, I needed. To, you will want tow mirrors with this vehicle if you're going to tow something like an RV, like an like a camper or a trail a travel trailer. Um, the the stock mirrors on a Tundra are adequate at best when you're just driving around town. They're horrible when you're towing because you can't see jack around you. So I bought a set of the slide on. Um, mirrors from e-trailer um, they're not the best looking things in the world they kind of look goofy if you ask me but it was the best option out there for the money without trying to do something custom with a with a late model set of tow mirrors or something but the nice thing about these is when I need them I slide them on and hook them up and when I don't they sit in the camper I don't have to drive around with them all the time on there um, I've also got a backup camera um, as you can see the screen is huge um, I'm not sure I would get that big a screen again um, would probably get one a little bit smaller can't remember what the size of this thing is but it's enormous um, positives and negatives you know I'm sure it has its benefits but I could probably get away with something smaller but it, the nice thing about it it's not necessarily like I don't necessarily use it a lot when I'm driving down the highway um, other than just making sure nobody's riding my rear but the big advantage to it is when you're getting into a campground backing around things and that sort of thing it's 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 worth its weight in gold especially if you're like me and a lot of times i'm driving to the camping the campground i'm going to set everything up and then the family's going to come down later so i'm doing a lot of this stuff solo um what else uh again i did the the reese brake controller with the pigtail that hooks into the factory wiring um which is great it's one of the nice things about these trucks is if you have the tow package it's already got a pigtail in the kick panel that you can hook that wire to and then it just plugs into the back of your your uh, brake box you don't have to do any splicing or wiring it's really simple it's a plug and play if you will um, and I've been really happy with that one I mean there's there's certainly much more expensive versions and again I'll put the description of what I use in the in the in the comments but it's a uh, it works fine for me. I mean, um, what else? Uh, oh, tire pressure is huge. So make sure when you're towing with these vehicles, you've got your tire pressures correct. Uh, make sure your tire pressure and your trailer is correct. You don't have them overinflated or underinflated. It makes a difference. You can feel it if you've got underinflated tires, especially if you're not running load range E. I don't run load range E on this truck. Um, they're a much heavier tire. They will impact your fuel economy a little bit. Um, I'm not towing anything near what I would need to max out what a, what what the tires I have now, let alone having to get to a load range E. Um, so I, I know a lot of guys that run E's on their trucks, but I don't personally see an advantage, um, assuming you make sure that your 
your uh, PSIs and your tires are right on the money. Um, what else? Uh, can't really think of anything else off the top of my head that I've really done to this truck as far as to bloody things I would like to do. Um, I do want to get the bigger um, bump stops that give you a little bit of cushion. So it's not necessarily like I'm not looking to ride on the bump stop when I'm riding or when I'm driving and towing. The advantage of those is when you do hit a bump, like hit a big dip in the road and that your springs compress, you don't go all the way down and hammer down into those small bump stops that are factory. These are bigger bump stops that have some absorption. So when you do hit that big bump, it absorbs that, that shock and slows the movement of the of the body down so you're not bang bang and harshness and rattling down on things i would like to get some of those um, i do think that uh, it, it will tow ni nicer i do I have a friend of mine that has them on his truck and he's been super happy with them they're not a difficult install um, you can do it with hand tools in a couple of hours and so eventually maybe in the spring i'll get around to doing that um, but you know the nice thing about these trucks if you get the tow package you've got all the goodies you've got the rv wiring you've got the the trailer brake pre-wire and the kick panel you've got transmission coolers it's you know I've, I've never had an issue with this truck running hot when i'm towing i've never had an issue with the transmission running hot um, i do um, on my phone i've got a uh, a, uh, a diagnostic scan uh, application and i'll put that in the in the description as well that keeps an eye on all the on the you know on the vehicle as it's being driven so it'll tell me my transmission temp my real engine temp so i'm not relying on the guesstimation gauge that's in the dash and it tells me my current fuel economy my overall economy um, and then you can you can program a lot of different stuff to, for it to, to monitor the only thing i've not been able to make work that i would like is a distance to empty for some reason it doesn't work with this truck but everything else that I'm looking for kind of kind of factors in so I, I do have that running while I'm towing so I can kind of keep an eye on the on the uh, the engine how it's how it's working um, but uh, yeah that's that's about it um, if you have any questions I've not answered specific to the first gen tundra with towing but in the comments I'll do my best to give you know to answer your questions uh, but uh, you know so I guess the big thing is do I recommend a first generation tundra for towing absolutely Assuming you're towing something that's within the tow capacity of the vehicle, assuming that you're not trying to overdrive the vehicle, and lastly, that you keep the vehicle serviced regularly. Um, you know, that more than anything will make sure that these vehicles last a long time and hold up. Um, again, this truck's an 04. I've got a roughly 100, well, I think I'm, I think I'm creeping up on 140,000 miles. So, you know, we're just now getting broke in, as they say. Um, but it's, it's been a great truck. I've towed it a lot of miles. In fact, I just got back from a, a round trip to Florida with it, towing the little boat. Um, you know, it's I, I couldn't be happier for what I use it for. Would I hook it up to a gooseneck? No. Would I hook it up to a 40-foot travel trailer? No. Would I, would I tow a huge stock trailer with it? Absolutely not. Um, but it's great for what it's designed for. And I, will, I would honestly say with a 6,000-pound rating, I wouldn't tow 6,000 pounds with it again. I'm comfortable with around 4,000 pound travel trailer. I don't know that I would really tow much more with it. I think there's better platforms if your intent is to have a vehicle that you're going to tow with. Um, I would much prefer a true half ton truck, uh, a newer Tundra, if you will, one of the bigger Tundras, you know, whatever it is, something that's got a little bit more, but you know, more, you know, it weighs more. It's a, you know, some more, it's a stouter truck. It's a true full-size truck. Um, because again, this is kind of a, a, it's a niche vehicle. It's between, nestled nicely, if you will, between the Tacoma and the Tundra of today. Um, so keeping all that in mind, make a good decision. Be honest with yourself, you know, because I know a lot of people want this truck, but it may not be the, the right truck for you. You know, um, it, it, if you when the time comes, and it will, eventually my wife and I, we want to take the kids out west on a big RV trip. When that time comes, I'm not going to be taking this truck. Um, hopefully by that time I'll have something bigger, something newer, um, something that will, will handle altitude better, handle you know this weight over longer distances without you know, being as tired. Uh, and honestly, you know, you get, you get to a point, you know, as reliable as this truck is, do I want to do a 3,000 mile round trip with it? I could, 
Um, do I want to? Not necessarily. I mean, it's uh, these don't get the best fuel economy. This truck towing that camper averages 11 miles per gallon. Um, I get about 13 and a half towing the skiff. Um, so these, you're not going to be passing many gas stations on a trip with this thing. Um, as trucks go, it's a smaller tank, so it's you know, it doesn't lend itself really well to long distance towing trips unless you're just towing something really small. So when that time comes, it'll probably be time to move up. You know, as fast as my boys are growing, um, I'll probably be in a suburban before it's all said and done. Um, so anyway, that. Uh, that's kind of a brief overview of, of towing with a Tundra. My thoughts on it, my opinions are mine. I do not endorse anything that I don't have personal experience with. Make your own decisions, make your own informed decisions. Nothing I've said in this in this video is, is law, it is opinion, and should be taken as such. So whatever you do, you're doing of your own free will. So if you want to get out there and, and buy one and tow, great. Do what you feel is the right decision for you. And uh, again, appreciate everybody uh, following along, um, trying to get a little bit more content out there. Just uh, as I said, I know I've, this has been the excuse before, man, people's busy. Uh, didn't realize just how busy this year would be um, now that I've got a, a, a kindergartner, a first grader, and a kid that started high school. So it's like we're being pulled all sorts of different directions. But anyway, I hope everybody has a, has a great uh, time on your next adventure. Don't forget to like and follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time.